Hello again, and welcome to this little guide on using Nanite on characters, vehicles, and quite a few other rigged things that aren't completely clear from what they've shown so far, but are particularly simple once you once you get the hang of the few little things required. Uh, they teased this a bit with the Valley of the Ancients and the giant mech magitech creature that they had in there. I think it was millions and millions of verts, and they did it by basically just attaching a ton of geo, a ton of static meshes to one underlying skeletal mesh. And the way they're parented and they're socketed is makes it look like the nanite is, is actual skeletal mesh themselves. Uh, they also teased this in the, uh, the Matrix demo. Um, particularly with cars, they show a bit off in the, in the tech demo side of it, where all the cars are nanite triangles. But um, again, they don't really show how they did that. So I hope I can help you out with that. I thought I'd put together a somewhat ridiculous demo of just what you can do with nanite on characters and a bit with the vehicles over there, but mostly with characters. Show you just how good it, it can operate in mass, especially. Um, as you can see, I'm running well over 100 FPS. This is a 1440 resolution. There are more than are there 44 characters on there. Each one of them are 2 million verts a piece. And it's just cruising along just fine. It's kind of impressive. I took this vehicle from one of the uh, free Vigilant packs. I'll show you how I converted that in a moment. Here's a quick spin around the scene of all these super high res, although quickly made character armors and little golems over here, all running off the mannequin. The nanite view is pretty impressive. It kind of shows off just how much detail you can really get, and just how well it handles it at a distance as well as close up can add more and more detail as needed, as well as reducing anything in the distance. This vehicle isn't particularly high res, but you can go pretty crazy now with kind of whatever you want. Uh, another interesting thing to keep an eye out for is the material IDs. This will show you just what It'll be combining uh, draw call wise, which, as I'll show you shortly, is, is pretty huge savings on nanites end. Non nanite meshes would be more than doubling the draw call count in most cases. And here, it's smart enough to know what is using the same material and what should be combined. And of course, without nanite turned on, it is a whole other story. Now, it's not the fairest comparison, because you'd never run 2 million vert characters all over the place, but the biggest thing to pay attention to, at least in my opinion, is the draw calls. There's more than double for the exact same meshes, exact same setup. The only difference is Nanite is disabled. Nanite is quite a bit smarter and better about combining meshes that use the same materials. And saving draw calls is always a big win no matter what your target is. Enabling Nanite is pretty straightforward as well. Uh, when you first import a mesh, there's a Build Nanite option towards the top. You can turn that on so it saves it every time you import. Or if you already have meshes or just want to test uh, really quick, you can right-click Nanite and then Enable or Disable. You can do that on individual mesh or all at once. Um, just keep in mind the first time you enable it or when you import it with that on, it can take quite a while, especially if you're doing a very high res mesh. Um, uh, it's probably the biggest thing to keep in mind with Nanite in general. Uh, while the performance is amazing, you are still taking up a notable amount of disk space and that import time will add up. 
So don't go too crazy if you can avoid it, but there is quite a bit of leeway there at the very least. Here's an example of using Nanite to augment a regular skeletal mesh character, simply for armor, accessories, weapons, kind of anything that'll work rigid bound and doesn't need to bend with the character. Um, the base setup is pretty much like you would run anything else. You have a skeletal mesh, um, just a mannequin in this case, uh, can any animation blueprint or just directly plan an animation. But then what makes the nanite work is surprisingly simple. You just add a uh, static mesh and socket it to the appropriate location. Um, you want to save yourself some time and uh, when you export the individual pieces, offset them back to uh, the origin in relation to the socket or the joint that you're going to be socketing to. Otherwise, you'll have to manually offset everything. Um, I'll show you that shortly. Uh, a little uh, mass exporter I put together in Houdini. Uh, I would also recommend uh, counter rotating your export. Uh, I did not do that, so I had to manually rotate some of these, which are a little imprecise, but it's just a quick example. This uh, quick little golem character I made here is another good example of what you can do with Nanite, particularly more for uh, robotic characters, golems like this, anything that's really frigid and uh, does not need any sort of smooth binding. Uh, this is also how they set up that Valley of the Ancients giant mech. I have any standard skeletal mesh. Again, I'm just using the mannequin. Um, you can hide that mesh with the material, uh, or you can you know, make your rigid mesh itself big enough to hide it, or um, turning the skeletal mesh itself into some simple stick figure is also a good way to go. But when you're, when you're attaching the pieces again, you want to export it with their uh, origin set kind of at the, the zeroed out in the world, but also in relation to where the joint would be zeroed out, so you don't have to do all the offsets manually. You just socket it to the same bone that you're doing that offset with, and you just need a static mesh for each piece. You can go as simple or as complex as you want. Um, you can usually also LOD quite a few of the bones out of the original skeletal mesh. Save you a bit of processing time there, just right out the gate. The setup for vehicles is pretty much the same, and uh, they kind of tease this in their matrix demo. Um, and it's surprisingly simple, but I'm just kind of running through the way I set it up. Um, so this is one of the vigilant uh, military vehicles that you can get off the Epic Store, the marketplace for free. Uh, I stripped it down so the skeletal mesh itself is just these moving parts you see highlighted here. You could go even farther and strip the entire thing down, but uh, they're so low, uh, low res and simple, I didn't think it was necessary. But then the base mesh, the one big nanite piece, um, there's nothing special there, I didn't even need to socket it, just being a child is fine. And then the wheel is one single static mesh, duplicated eight times over for this, and that is socketed to each wheel joint. Um, again, like the character pieces, you'll want to export the wheel zeroed out in a way that makes sense for the joint you're going to socket to. And that is about it. Um, one thing you want to keep in mind is if you have glass or any other transparent materials, you'll have to separate that into a separate mesh because those cannot be nanite. Uh, same with any vert offset uh, or tessellated materials if they were bring that back. But this is uh, all opaque, opaque material, opaque model. So I was able to keep it all into one single piece. And here's a look at my Houdini setup for mass exporting the pieces as well as offsetting them to work better with the joints, save some time. Um, my setup here, I've already modeled each piece to have their appropriate names um, to make this a lot easier and just kind of do in mass. 
I uh, gave each piece the name according to the joint that they um, that they work with. Uh, the second step is just promoting that for this little iteration here to give it a unique unique name. Um, it runs through each piece and numbers it by iteration. You could also do a connectivity, which will automatically name them. But uh, if you ever have separate pieces all connected to the same bone, that could end up with separate exports. So this is just kind of a safe way to ensure that you have a, a unique number per joint instead of per piece. Uh, the second step here, I'm uh, promoting the uh, just the highest iteration number, basically the, the number of pieces. And we'll use that in this max, out, max export below. I'll show you that in a second. This one here deletes all other pieces that aren't on the current frame, which is how the uh, max export works. It just kind of swaps frames and exports the active, active piece from there. Um, over here, I'm grabbing the rig, which is also the mannequin shown before. Again, deleting all the other joints, except for the one that relates to the current piece. Uh, setting that down to the uh, origin, down to zero. And one nice thing about using the match size node here is it gives you this X form uh, attribute that you can use. And I do use right here. This lets me offset the, uh, the piece down to zero in relation to the joint, so that head joint will be down there, and so this this will make it so I don't have to offset anything once I'm back in Unreal and just socketing to it. Makes it much easier. Uh, Spoon name is for the exporter itself, just easier to read. I scale it up for Unreal's sake. We just need to go up 100. The uh, character exporter automatically handles that, but since these are just static meshes, you need to do that on its own. Uh, nothing too special in this FBX exporter, but the naming has a little trick that you'll need. Instead of a frame number, I'm using the bone name, which is that promotion right there that I'm reading from. But that way it'll export it with you know, whatever name you want, underscore that bone name, then you can quickly identify what you need to sock to once you're back in Unreal. The real workhorse here is this top network. And you can create those. Top network right there. And once inside, you make these range generate. Again, that's just that guy. And this is where we're using that max piece count. I'm reading it in. And that runs off of this guy there. That tells it how many pieces are going to be as well as associating it with each frame so it knows what it needs to swap out um, while it exports them individually. The ROP fetch is what is doing the exporting um, or at least it points to that FBX exporter. We're just looking at it right there. Uh, a couple things you need to set is the write files mode. Uh, node defines priority under schedules, and this hip file can be useful so it automatically knows where to save things. That is pretty much it. Now with that set up with your naming how you want it, all you have to do is uh, cook output node, and I'll run through, export them all just as you like, and then you're ready to go back to Unreal and import them all. One side note worth mentioning, um, since you have all this vert data to work with now, it's actually quite easy to make a material that uses no or very little textures, which will save you even more and give you that much more leeway to do other things, material effects and pretty much whatever you want. So with all these verts, you can use vert color to add things like edge wear or baked AO or noise. Um, I kind of used it here for a, a metal mask on the sword and then just edge wear on the other pieces, but the options are pretty well unlimited. You've got four channels with the red, green, blue, and alpha. And you can even combine them to do some interesting effects. It just depends how, how much fun you want to have in the Unreal material. I uh, hope that was helpful and 
uh, have fun with all the unlimited possibilities of nanite. Pretty amazing stuff you can do with it. Pretty incredible amounts of detail and automating with Houdini makes it even that much funner because it saves a ton of time using existing rigs and animations. Anyway, hope that was helpful and thanks for watching.